This video is designed just to help you to decide when you're doing Pythagoras' theorem whether you're going to add the squared numbers or whether you're going to subtract those numbers. So here I have an example um, of a right-angled triangle. We're asked to work out the value of x and the length of one of the sides of the triangle. And there are two sort of ways of doing this. You can um, start thinking about squares on the sides of it or you can do this algebraically using the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to start off just by talking about the squares on the different sides uh, and doing it in a sort of more basic way. And then we're going to have a look at the algebraic way and see if we can decide whether we add or subtract to find this distance. So if we start off with Pythagoras' theorem, basically, uh, in, the, in its most sort of basic form, Pythagoras came along and said, right, well, if we draw a square here, we draw a square here on these two shorter sides, Okay, the area of those two is going to add up to make the area of this big square here. Okay, can't quite fit it on my piece of paper. Well, let's have a look at some of those numbers. The area of this square, we know it's 25. 5 times 5 is 25. The area of this square, we know it's 81. 9 times 9 makes 81. And so what we're looking for is an area to go in here, um, which together with 25 is going to add up to make 81. So we're looking for something plus 25 makes 81. And that should tell you that you're going to do a subtraction. You're going to do, to find that missing number, 81 take away 25. Um, and that's going to give you your answer. So 81 take away 25 gives you the answer of 6056, I believe. And then when you square root your 56, you're going to get your answer. Okay, um, But lots of people don't want to go around drawing squares on the sides of their triangles. So one thing that you can do is you, if I just redraw this question again, okay, you can say to yourself, right, well there's a sort of shortcut rule. If I'm finding the longest side, that's the hypotenuse, then I'm going to square and add the two numbers. Okay, so I'm going to do square and add, and then do the square root. Okay, um, however, since I'm not finding the longest side, the longest side, by the way, is called the hypotenuse, it's always opposite the right angle. Since in this case I'm not finding the longest side, I'm actually finding one of the shorter sides. In this case, you need to square the numbers that you see. You need to subtract. And then you need to square root. OK. So let's just check that that gives us the same answer as before. We square the numbers we see. That's 81 and 25. 9 squared is 81. 5 squared is 25. We subtract them, which gives us our 56. And then we square root 56. OK, let's just check. Is that exactly the same as what we did above? Yes, it is. OK, we didn't have to go through drawing squares. We didn't have to start with this uh, statement where they add together to make 81. We simply said, right, I'm finding a shorter side, so I'm going to square the numbers that I see, subtract them, and then square root. So let's try and apply those two rules to a couple of examples. I'll just write those out again for us. We've got, if you're finding a long side, the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, okay, then you're going to square, add, and then square root. If you're finding one of the shorter sides, you're going to square, subtract, and then square root. That's the basic difference. You're adding for it to find a longer side. You are subtracting to find a shorter side. So let's just have a quick look here. OK, here is a right-angled triangle. I'm going to give the numbers 13. Let's do it in centimetres. 8 centimetres and x. We're asked to find out the value of x. OK, so we've got to decide which of these methods we're going to use, adding or subtracting. Where's the longest side? Well, that's the longest side. 
I'm not asked to find that side. I already know that that's 13, so I'm asked to find a shorter side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this rule. Square the numbers I see, subtract, and then square root them. So square the numbers I see. Start with the biggest one, 13 squared. Subtract 8 squared. OK, and that's going to give me, so that's 169. Take away 64 is 105 and then I would square root my 105 to get the answer. Okay, so a subtraction if you're finding one of the shorter sides. Let's have a look at another example here. Put this on top so we can still see the rules. Um, this one here. Okay, we are going to have 15 centimetres, 7 centimetres and X here. So let's have a look. For the longest side, the longest side is opposite the right angle, it's called the hypotenuse, and in this case I am asked to find that longest side. Since I'm finding the longest side, since that's the length that I've got to work out, I use this rule here, square add square root. So I'm going to square the numbers that I can see, I'm going to add them together, OK, 15 times 15, 7 times 7 add them together, I'm going to get 274 and then for the final step I would square root 274. Okay, let's try one more. In fact, if I draw two, you can take a minute and just decide for yourself. Okay, so we've got 8 centimetres, 5 centimetres and X. And then I'm going to do 7 centimetres, 12 centimetres, and the value of y. So pause the video, decide for yourself which one you think you're going to add, which one you think you're going to subtract. Okay, I hope you've got these right. The first one here, uh, the longest side is this one labelled with an x. And since we're being asked to find the longest side, we're going to square the numbers and add them. In this case, that makes 89. And then we square root that number to get our answer. OK. For this one here, for the value of y, we are going to look for the longest side. There it is. The longest side is 12. I already know how long it is. So I must be finding one of the shorter sides. So I'm going to use the rule square, subtract, square root. So I'm going to square the numbers that I see, starting with the biggest one, and I'm going to subtract them. 144, take away 49, that leaves you with 95, and then square root that answer, and you'll get your answer. So I hope that's helped you to decide when you're subtracting and when you are adding. Very last thing, um, if you do this using the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay, and you know your a, b, and c, so c is the hypotenuse, um, if you're good enough at your algebra, you can actually rearrange this. So, for example, if you're trying to find a squared, you need to do c squared minus b squared. You take away the b squared from both sides of the equation. And if you're trying to find b squared, that's going to be c squared minus a squared. OK, similarly, you take away a squared from both sides of the equation. So if you do it using algebra, it can be an advantage, can be a lot quicker um, if you're confident with your algebra uh, and rearranging formulae.